Learning About Liturgy, adapted from Learning About the Liturgy by Dorothy Kaczynski Corolla. Session 11, Liturgy of the Eucharist, an overview of the meal and sacrifice. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for their forgiveness of sins. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. Our Lives Everyone applauded as Grandma and Grandpa walked down the center aisle. Elizabeth followed with her cousin Michael. Then came Aunt Judy and Uncle Gus. The rest of the family and friends lined up to congratulate Grandma and Grandpa on celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. When everyone had left the church, they set off for the restaurant where they would dance and eat and celebrate. While they were having dinner, Elizabeth leaned over to her grandmother. She commented, It was really nice to hear you renew your wedding vows, even though you weren't really getting married. Grandma thought for a minute. Well, it felt pretty real to me. In fact, those vows meant more today than they did 50 years ago. Today seems like my wedding day all over again. I'm really glad you could be here this time. Our Liturgy Our liturgy is often referred to as a sacrificial meal. This simple phrase gives us two important ways to think about the liturgy of the Eucharist. Like the anniversary dinner, people with something special to celebrate gather for a meal. And like the renewal of vows, it feels pretty real. Just like the sacrifice made for us on the cross. The Mass is a meal. Sharing a meal has always been an important way for people to celebrate and become united with one another. We can hardly imagine a special celebration that does not include food. Eating together draws people to closer. Whether it's sharing a candy bar or a Thanksgiving feast, we are joined to those with whom we eat. During his life, Jesus shared many meals with his friends. When he was accused of eating with sinners, Jesus preached about God's welcoming compassion for sinners. When he appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, he made breakfast for them. When his followers were hungry, he blessed five loaves of bread and two fish and four fed more than 5,000 people. When he went to a great banquet, he preached about sitting in the lowest place. There are many examples of meals Jesus shared with others in the Gospels. Something to do. Compare our celebration of Eucharist to a special meal. In the right-hand column, tell how what happens at liturgy is like what happens at a special meal. At a special meal, we invite people to join us. What do we do at Mass? At a special meal, we greet our guests. What do we do at Mass? At a special meal, we share our stories. What do we do at Mass? At a special meal, we set the table. What do we do at Mass? At a special meal, we get the food ready. What do we do at Mass? At a special meal, we eat and drink. What do we do at Mass? And at a special meal, we clear the table. What do we do at Mass? The Mass is a sacrifice. Just as there are many examples of meals Jesus shared in the Gospels, there are also many examples of the sacrifices Jesus made for people. He left his home in order to preach to the people. People criticized him for welcoming sinners and showing them God's compassion. But he made that sacrifice so that even outcasts would know God's love. By curing people on the Sabbath, he broke the Sabbath laws and gave up being accepted by the Jewish leaders. This is a supreme sacrifice, of course was when he gave up his life instead of giving up God's way. Sacrifices have an important place in Jewish history. In Old Testament days, kings would sacrifice an animal when they made a covenant or agreement with each other. Farmers would sacrifice their first produce or their best lamb as a sign of their gratitude and trust in God. 
because Jesus' crucifixion happened at Passover, Jesus' sacrifice of himself reminded the early Christians of the Passover lamb. As the blood of the lamb saved the Israelites, the blood of Jesus saves us. As the lamb was the sacrifice of the first covenant, Jesus is the sacrifice of the new covenant. When we were slaves to sin, the blood Jesus shed on the cross saved us. We are set free from sin by the covenant God makes with us in Jesus. So at Mass, when the consecrated bread is broken and the consecrated wine is poured out, we sing about Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Just as Elizabeth's grandmother felt as if it were her wedding day, the sacrifice of Jesus is present again in every liturgy. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the bread that is broken and the wine that is poured out become the body of Jesus and is bro that is broken and the blood of Jesus that is poured out for us. What happened on Calvary is happening again today. Only now it is an unbloody sacrifice, and this time we can be there. Living Our Liturgy we are asked to make sacrifices in our lives. Like Jesus, we might have to give up being accepted in order to do what is right. Like Jesus, we might be criticized for treating someone nicely, even though no one else does. Missionaries still leave their homes to preach the good news to those who have not yet heard it. And though it is not too common, people will give their lives for living God's way. Can you think of some examples? Something to do. Every sacrifice we make unites us with Jesus. How do you show love? In our parish. Can you clearly see the consecrated bread and being broken and the consecrated wine being poured? Can you sing the Lamb of God litany that St. Anthony of Padua uses during the breaking and the pouring? <laughs> 